Good morning, everybody. This is a great day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I praise the Lord. The Lord is so good. It's good to be alive this morning and well. Coming up onto some great times in history for myself. I'm getting older as each moment go by. Got a great day coming up tomorrow, the Lord will nothing happen. I'll be 80 years young. Praise the Lord. My older sister was 82 on yesterday. Praise the Lord. We, I talked to her and she says, bro, we are getting old together. I said, yes, we are. We both have outlived our parents and we just the Lord's been good to us. That young lady is the reason, one of the reasons why I am saved today. She made me go to a Jack Worst organization meeting on a Friday night in New York City on one of the busy nights of the world. Uh, she talked me out of going in the street and going to a meeting with her at a Jack Worst meeting. He was a man that on every Friday night, he had a service at the convention center, one of the convention places there. Now, it was a big church. I believe it was a Catholic church in the basement of a Catholic church. We had a meeting there every Friday night. And uh, my sister talked me into going there with her that Friday night. I said, okay, we'll go. Me and Benny, my friend at that time, and I'll sit there. And I remember the night as he gave the altar call and I told Benny I said I'm not going down there he said I'm not going either but it was something about that organ that he, he began to play and they began to sing just as I am just as I am sitting there thinking about how I was at that particular moment I don't know what but I do know now that it was the spirit of the Lord that touched me and before I know it, I was walking down the aisle and I looked back and Benny was coming too. We walked down to the altar that night and gave our hearts to the Lord. And I changed, I really did. I changed, I stopped doing the things that I was doing and I was living by myself at that particular time. I, told, I quit all my girlfriends and just was gonna live for the Lord. And that was a great time. But anyway, there's a lot of milestones in my life. I was just looking this morning. I've been in ministry for 49 years, or going on 50 years in ministry. I've been pastoring for 43 years. I said, that's two, two retirements. You're supposed to retire after 20 years, don't you? <laughs> so I've been 43 years, and I'm still going for the Lord. The Lord's been good to me. And I promise the Lord, as long as he gives me good health and good strength, I'll do whatever I need to do for him and for the church that he would have me to do. All right. Then enough of that about me, I guess. But anyway, I just thought about all that this morning. <clears throat> anyway, good to be here again. We worked a little bit at the church yesterday. We are working on the ceiling down there in the basement, and we got started on that a few weeks ago, and we... We're almost to the end of that project, but there's so many projects around there that need to be done. So we talked yesterday with what our next project would be if the Lord will nothing happen. But anyway, we did get the covers for the, the seats, the benches. So if some of you have some extra time on your hand and you'd like to go over there and spend an hour or two putting those uh, covers back on the cushions, be feel free to do that. I'm sure somebody will let you in the church if you don't have a key that you can get in. If, I, if it's necessary, I will drive the 25 miles and come over there and open the door for you if you'd like to get in and, and do some work. All right? Just, just see for thought. You know, just see for thought. That's all that is. But thank you again for all that you do for Christ and for his church. I thank you for your faithfulness. Continue to be faithful, and the Lord will continue to bless you for your faithfulness. 
All right. I heard y'all had a retreat yesterday. I was working while y'all were retreating. So I hope y'all were praying for me, praying for us as we were working while you were retreating. Again, thank all of you for what you do for the Lord and for his church. All right, I guess that's enough of me talking this morning. Let me go get into my message. My thought for today is the power of hope. I talked about last, last week, my message was don't lose hope. And today I'm talking about the, the power of hope. You don't realize how much power there is when you have hope. It's a, that's a powerful. As old, as old Brian Frost used to say, that's powerful. So keep hope alive in your life. The power of hope. I want to read an introduction to the book of John, the epistle of John. John, this was this is an introduction to that chapter. The first chapter, first John and one. God is light. God is love. God is life. John is enjoying a delightful fellowship with the God that is God of light, the love and life. And he is desperately desires that his spiritual children enjoy the same fellowship. God is light. Therefore, to engage in fellowship with him, we must walk in light and not in darkness. As we walk in light, we will regularly confess our sins. Regularly confess our sins. I know so you know. I know you don't sin, right? But you probably sin. There's sin of commission and sin of omission. You done one of them, all right? So that's why John said, "Confess your sins regularly, allowing the blood of Christ." to continually cleanse us. Two major roadblocks to hinder this walk will be failing to love with the world and failing for the alluring lies of false teachers. All right, that's enough of that. The power of hope. This is my thought this morning. In John, first John two and fifteen and sixteen, I want to read those couple of verses. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And listen to this. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof with it. But he that doeth the will of God abide it forever. Amen? Amen. Amen, Brother Cross. Amen, Brother Paul. Okay, I'm going to get into my message now. The power of, of hope. Let me pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be here on your earth for these 79 plus years. Soon will be 80 years if I should live to see tomorrow. I thank you for that. It was no good of mine that I have lasted this long, but it's because of your good goodness and your mercy and your kindness and your love toward me 
And I thank you for every day of that. I praise and glorify and magnify your holy and righteous name. Bless everyone out here that this morning that is listening and looking. Bless them and let them feel the inspiration of your spirit this morning. Bless everyone, that those that are sick and shut in this morning. Bless them for me, Lord. There are some that I know that are shut in this morning and on the bed. Uh, Lord, and they may be listening and looking. Would you bless them for me this morning? Touch their bodies. They've been sick for some period of time now. Would you please touch them this morning? I remind, I'm reminded of the lady that had been sick for so long and she had exhausted all of her income. And she heard that one day you were going to pass by. And she said, if I could but just touch the hem of your garment, I know that I would be made whole. And she touched the hem of his garment. And you know what he asked her? Who touched me? And some one of the disciples said, you asked who touched you and all this crowd around you? But he knew that there was somebody that had touched him, that he felt the virtue that went out of him into her. And he knew that somebody had touched him with faith to receive healing for the body. This morning, can I tell you, tell you something? The Lord is right there near you. If you are on a bed of affliction this morning, the Lord is right near you. If you just reach out and touch him, I believe you would feel the inspiration of his spirit and the healing power that comes from him. Do that for me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. What is hope? Hope is an abstract idea, a feeling, and an emotion or an internal understanding. Hard to compare to anything visible. That might be the reason it is kind of hard to understand. We like to see everything or feel everything that we do. There's an old cliche that says seeing is believing. That was the reason that Nicodemus had a, such a problem with Jesus when Jesus told him that he must be born again. He wanted to see this thing. He didn't know that it was something that he had to receive by faith. He could not see it, and he didn't understand that it was a faith proposition, not a natural one. You see, hope is a sense that things are going to be great or get better. In these almost 80 years that I have, the Lord has allowed me to remain on his earth. My eyes have seen a lot of change in this world. There are some, some things that will be with us forever, as long as that old serpent, the devil, remains in power. And I believe he's going to remain in power for a long time. Jesus came to this earth to bring us hope through salvation. He made himself sin in our place that the father might forgive us and adopt us into his kingdom. We are able to obtain that through faith. When we have high hope, our hope is anchored in something sure and reliable. It changes us. It motivates us to reach out for what we've been hoping in, what we've been hoping in. It changes us to improve and build. No hope, what happens when we don't have hope is difficult to function. We don't have that drive to work for. There is great power in hope. Today, we begin our Advent journey, the waiting with hope. We want to have hope for better days to come. I tell my wife so often that I'm a realist. 
I believe in real things. I don't have much confidence in this world in which we live in, other than where I know that there's a God that is in charge and that he's, he's going to do whatever he wants to do, when he wants to do, and how he wants to do it, because he's sovereign. I know that this world is not my home, that I'm just passing through. I do that by having faith in the God of the universe. I have hope because I know that I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whichever you prefer. I know that I'm not perfect, just saved. Because of salvation, I see the basis for our hope and the powerful impact that it has on our lives. I know that Jesus Christ is our personal Savior. This is why God told Jeremiah in, in, 30, in Jeremiah 31, 31, the days are coming, declared the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judea, of Judah. In this covenant, I will make with the people of Israel at that time, declared the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they will be my people. In chapter 31, Jeremiah prophesied a new covenant between God and his people. Not of law and of works written on stones, but of love and faith written in the heart. We might not ever see the, this kind of, of days that we hope for down here on earth. Our hope and promise in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Salvation fills our heart with joy and peace that we really don't understand fully. But because it comes from above, we accept it through faith. Complete peace will happen when Jesus comes back to take his church out of the sinful world. Until then, we're going to have to put up with hate, discomfort, ignorance, stubbornness, and all these sorts of things that is in our existence today. Hate will never end until Jesus comes back again. This world will never see complete peace until Jesus comes back again. I told my wife the other day, we will never have peace until that old devil, the serpent, is tied up in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. I believe John tells us in Revelation, for a thousand years we're going to have peace. But then after, after that, Satan going to be loose again for a short period of time before his finish really comes. And I often wonder why the Lord going to lose him again. Well, the Lord knows. After that, the Bible says we will, he will be loose for a short period of time to, to deceive the nation. Then I assume that we will stand before the great white throne and receive our just reward. I can see in my mind the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. You see, our time is now. While the blood is still running warm in your vein, you know, your body, and you have breathed Enough to ask the Lord, you have breath enough to ask the Lord, our Savior, to forgive you of your sins. And the Bible says he is just 
and faithful to forgive our sins and present us faultless before the throne. Am I making any sense? I love to make sense. If I'm not making any sense, you know how I would do. I would just sit down. Hope begins with a promise that the days are coming when I will fulfill the good promise I made to Israel and Judah. My vision of a, a better future is a vision for a better future isn't just a wishful thinking. It is just a matter of having enough faith. It isn't about a season or a program or a better way of life. The days are coming in those days just at the right time. Our hope is centered on the person, Jesus. Righteousness, he said, I will make a righteous branch. Righteous, right standing. Always in right. Perpetually doing the good and just. Our hope is centered on the person Jesus, the righteous one who did not sin because he knew not no sin. He was righteous who did no, not no sin became unrighteous for us. Took our sins on himself so that we could become righteous. Hope changes us in the present present. This transformation grows in us a new way of thinking. A new set of priorities. I don't I think I know in my own thoughts, I know that this world is not gonna ever be peaceful. I know we want we want to everybody wants it. Everybody to, to be saved, sanctified, but see, but that that's not that's not a reality. It won't happen in this world. The only world, only way this world is gonna be everybody be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit is when we get in, in heaven with Jesus. As long as this world exists, it's, we're going to have hate. We're going to have confusion. We're going to have all these sorts of, we're going to have murder and killing and all this kind of thing. It's going to happen until Jesus come back again. So if you want him to come back in, of course you start praying as Lord. Come on back now, Lord. Well, he's going to come at his own time. But what we need to do is set some new priorities in our own lives. Make sure that your salvation grips and holds on to the solid rock. A new approach to how we make decisions. A new longing to reach the promised future life with Jesus. That's where our hope is. That's the we have. That's the power of hope. The power of hope is that hope that we have. We realize that whatever goes on around us is not going to affect us, but to a certain point, because we are looking for our Lord and Savior to come back and rescue us out of this old sinful world. So our hope, the power of hope that we have, is inside of us that keeps us moving forward. Knowing whatever's going on around us can't affect us but so far so much unless we allow it to. We have the power of hope in us to help us to stand firm. No matter what's going on around us, you stand firm in what you have and what you're living for. Am I making any sense here? I think I am. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 31, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, 
although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be in the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward part. Do you have that this morning? I have the law of God on my inward part. That's what keeps me going on. That's what keeps me with the hope that I have this morning because I, I feel it written into my heart and in my mind. And I'm holding on to that hope and that, that the Lord has in the promises that he has given to me. Hold on to the unchanging hand of the Lord this morning. Okay? He said, After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in the inward parts and write them in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I want to be his, a one of his people, don't you? Listen, there's power in hope. Hold on to the hope that you have. I got hope. Listen, this world going to pass away. And, and we go, we all going to pass away. Hopefully, unless the Lord come back soon. If he doesn't come back soon, we're going to all pass away. We're going to all go by the grave. But that's not, that's a transformation thing. It's not a, it's not a permanent thing. But it's a permanent thing when Jesus comes back and take us out of this world and take us back with him. That's what I want. That's, my, that's what my hope is this morning. That's the power of hope that I have in me that if I keep on keeping on, I'll be with Jesus one day when this, when this whole world pass away. Peter says it's going to burn up with fervent heat. It's going to pass away, church, one day. My hope is not in this world that we're living in right now. But my hope is in the hope in the world to come. A place called heaven. That's where my hope is. That's the power of hope this morning. That you have this morning is hold on to Jesus Christ. And one of these days, we're going to see him as he is. And we can go back and live with him. Ain't this what you want? Don't you? Do you have it on written on the inside of your? Listen. If you have it on the inside, you feel it. Kind of like one of my little grandkids asked me, Papa, how you know when you're saved? And I said to him, you have to feel it. When you feel it on the inside, you know that you are saved. You got to feel it. If you don't feel something, if you don't feel a little, little wheel turning on the inside, you better find yourself a, a closet to pray and pray and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sin and get yourself saved. Listen, there's power in hope this morning. That's what my hope is. My hope is not in this world. My hope is not to be a rich man because you can't take nothing. The Bible says we brought nothing into this world. And you ain't gonna take that now. That's the truth. I've had people just say, listen, if I die, bury my money with me. Now ain't nobody gonna put no money in no grave. If they do, somebody go there and dig that thing up that night. So you put don't put no money, don't put your hope in money, but put your hope in Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's going to last. It's what you do for Christ will last. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for these words this morning. Pray that you would bless those that were able to listen and to hear this morning. And if there was no one that did hear, bless them for me this morning. Everyone that have their name written in the book, would you bless them for me this morning? Every member, every visitor, every friend that Come in and go out of the doors of United Fellowship. Would you bless them? Bless this district for me. Bless our state overseer and his companion, Jenny. Bless this state. Bless every minister. Everyone this morning. Proclaiming your word. Let the word go forth. Touch the hearts of someone in the midst. That they may know you as their Lord and Savior. Not tomorrow. Not next week. But today. You do this for us, Lord, we give your name the praise, the glory, and all that is due unto your holy and righteous name. Lord, these blessings and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name for your sake. Amen. God bless y'all out there. Don't lose hope.
And there is power in hope. Remember that. There is power. Power in hope. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Thank all of you. That I, some of you have sent me some gifts. Thank you so much. I received it with gladness and joy. And I will enjoy it to the fullness. I'm going to enjoy some of it today. I'm going to have me a nice dinner in a little while. So thank you so much for all that you have sent me and given me. And if you haven't sent me nothing, you still got time. I ain't dead yet. And tomorrow is the day. And the days after that is the day for you. All right? God bless you. <laughs> Good luck. Ha, ha, ha.